So I'm Chris Teitzel, I'm the CEO and founder of Locker, um, a uh, security product that was built out of the CMS world. And um, we also run a services company called Cellardor Media, and I'm involved in all sorts of uh, privacy and security issues around the web. So nice. Yeah. And you are a, uh, a regular at WordCamps in the U.S., Chris. That's where yep. you and I have met many times. Yep. Been yep. to a few good after parties. And uh, few. speaking yeah. of after parties, <laughs> it's uh, I think it's about five o'clock over here. Right. So right. we're busy drinking Pilsner in right. uh, WordCamp EU in Berlin. As one does in Berlin. As one does. Yeah. As one is yeah. required to do by law. Yeah. So yeah, it's past five o'clock, so it's, we have to. Eat. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and, and so, you know, we, we had a, a lunch together today, actually, yeah. and you were telling me about your product, and, um, you know, I wanted to, uh, to talk, talk with you on camera because I thought it was, uh, it's really interesting. So, it, so it's, it's kind of technical right, um, for, right. for many of our uh, listeners and, uh, and viewers, um, and maybe what we can do is sort of by sort of talking about, about it in high-level terms, right. and then we can, we can dive a little deeper, but um, yeah, yeah. you want to give it a shot at describing it? Yeah. So... Um, our services company has been around for a decade. So the whole premise of uh, our concept for Locker and, and the, the service that we built was based out of continually as a services company running into the same issue over and over again. Um, and that was we were being asked to implement encryption into websites or um, we were just seeing all of these plugins just scatter private data throughout the database. So um, I actually recovered one client's email ad, um, account for them when they said, oh, I can't log into my email account. I go, oh, I have your password. And they go, no, you don't. And I go, yeah, you entered it into the website and it's in the database. And sure enough, it's sitting there in clear text in the database. Wow. Um, and so we saw that happening over and over and over again. So we went out and uh, worked with a company that, that builds a hardware security module, which are, think of them as like vaults, like really secure uh, locations for data. And so we worked with them and built a SaaS that allows us to take all of these secret values, API keys or encryption keys or whatever somebody has in their website that shouldn't be just sitting in plain text in the database, and it extracts it out and puts it in this vault um, so that it can be securely stored there. So um, that's kind of the basis of it at a, yeah. at a high level. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it, and so the, the whole premise is that process to do it is difficult to set up it takes a long time and a lot of knowledge to do. Um, and it's ex extremely expensive, prohibitively expensive. Um, and so part of it was we were building this product around these uh, hardware security modules. On average, those can cost thousands of dollars a month. So how do you go to somebody that's spending thousands of, or you know, they're paying maybe $100 a month for their hosting for the entire website, and you tell them, oh, by the way, in order to be secure, you have to spend $1,000 plus a month in order to do this small piece of your of your website, and it's just not a it wasn't a, a sale that was was possible. So I said, all right, I'm going to do this as a service and and create a, a secure way of, of um, creating a, a cloud based service that can share some of these these components and and make it feasible. So we dropped the price down to a, a fraction of what it is, so that you, you'll never spend more than your hosting on on your security, and that's our whole premise. Okay. And I guess uh, one of the things you mentioned earlier is that uh, you, some organizations are required to yeah. have this kind of infrastructure where um, the keys mm -hmm. are stored external to the, the, the infrastructure of yep. the website and that kind yep. of thing. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, PCI kind of is the most definitive and when they talk about key management. Um, if you're in HIPAA or any of the other regulations, they say you must properly protect them, right? Mm -hmm. and, kind of leave it nebulous so that they can come back later and decide whether or not you actually did it after a breach. Um, but PCI has come out and, and specifically said, no, if you're doing encryption, your encryption key cannot be in the same environment that the data is in, because at that point it's obfuscation, it's not encryption really. Um, and they've even come out recently and defined that even more to say, you can't hold it in the same cloud environment. So if I have a, an account with AWS, I can't store my encryption key using AWS's encryption key service inside that same account. I have to have a separate environment in a completely separate VPC or virtual private cloud for it. You can't have it as all part of one authentication system. Um, and so because of that, we're finding more and more companies are being regulated into having this type of service. And they're coming to us going, we have no idea what we're supposed to do, but according to our either InfoSec team internally or Compliance. Somebody's told us that we have to do this, um, and we looked into it, and it's crazy, crazy tough, crazy expensive. Um, and you know, for both Drupal and WordPress, we've done it so that we can install in a matter of minutes and have them compliant. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's more and more. And then again, with the the new privacy regulations that are coming out as well, 
they're all stating now that you must either obfuscate, anonymize, or encrypt data. And so that or encrypt data now means that if you're going to be doing it, you need to start doing it properly. So um, and that's, it's, that's it's something really that, that we're seeing more and more in business now is that they're having to have these type of products. Okay, and that's really about, you know, the encrypt data part is less about encrypting the data, but where do you store the keys to right. access that data? Right, the way I describe it is um, encryption is like a lock and key model, just like you would have at your house. Um, and if you go to uh, lock your door at your house, if you leave the key in the database on your website, it's the equivalent of taping it to the front door right next to the lock. Yes, you technically locked your door, but you left the me method to unlock it right next to where you locked it. And you gave me a fine example of that uh, over lunch, right. uh, you know, where you've seen some implementations where you have a plugin that is encrypting data in the database. They will claim that they are AES-256. Right, so military-grade, military if you will. Military-grade encryption, <laughs> right, which is accurate. Right. But the key to decrypt that is in the same table, in an adjacent record, in the same database, right? Literally namespaced right after each other so they show up in the same, same table. And so at, at that point, yes, you can check the box that you've done encryption, but it does not. <laughs> you didn't do it right. Yeah, you didn't do it right. And, and it's not to their fault. Like, I've, I've, I commend folks for for attempting to do encryption because you're, you're taking the steps that are necessary to protect the data. Um, but, but it's hard because if you're not doing key management properly, then you're just leaving the data vulnerable. Um, so we're, we're just a, a piece of how that works. Cool, um, you know, so just to unpack this for our, our listeners a little bit, um, uh, you, know, you can have a database, mm -hmm. uh, let's say a backup of a database. Yeah. Uh, you can store that backup on a file system and in fact, in the news uh, within the last week, Kathy and I were chatting about a breach. Uh, I, I think it was one of the, the ticketing companies where mm -hmm. they left a, um, a database from 2013 lying around and it had PII in it, yep. uh, personally identifiable information. And uh, that got out and it's, un it's an unencrypted database. Now, right. if that database was encrypted, uh, provided it is strong encryption, mm -hmm. the, it would be absolutely useless to the, right. uh, the, the the thief, and it wouldn't matter that that database is out there on the entire internet because right. no one has the keys for it, which right. is why key management is so important. Right, right. right. The, the stat, I'm, I'm a science um, nerd at heart, and the stat I love to use is that um, using the largest supercomputer available to us today, if we were to capture all the energy of the sun for a year, um, and put it into that, um, that computer, it would take longer than the known universe has been around to guess half of the key values that are the possibilities for what your keys are. So wow. it's, it's not, you know, you see Hollywood, they're in the van with dark light, and you know, they're, they're hacking away, like, oh, I just decrypted the information. That's not how it works. Like, hackers don't break the encryption, they find the keys. Yeah, you know, just enhance the photo or crack the encryption. Right, right, right. <laughs> if right. the data's not there, you're not going to get it. Right, it's it. not like CSI where they're yeah. you know doing things with the the screens and all that. You just can't you can't hack the encryption. You can hack the keys, and you can find the keys laying around. Um, and so that's that's primarily what you see in breaches is that somebody will get in the front door, um, they'll kind of prop a, a wedge in the door and, and leave an opening for themselves, and then they'll start exploring. They'll find a key or a password to another system, and then slowly start to infiltrate their way around. Okay. Um, and so these databases that are that are um, left out in the open and, and uh, either not in a protected you know um, file store like S3 or anything like that, or just publicly available, um, folks will get in there, and then sometimes they'll have passwords or keys or tokens that then lead to other systems. Um, there was another breach uh, a few years back uh, that one login had, and um, they're a single sign-on provider. They are you know their their whole job is to to store all the passwords on behalf of of their customers, um, and they had left their AWS master API key um, in a, according to the disclosure, it was a non-protected um, small sub-site. Um, my guess is that it's probably a marketing site or you know somebody spun something up real quick and said, hey, I need to use S3, okay, here's a key, drop it in there, now you can access S3. Well, that was the master key. A hacker got in, grabbed that master key, they were able to access their internal cloud, um, and then from there they were propping up you know, their own servers and their own databases and scraping all the data, and because the key management was involved in that same cloud, they just grabbed the keys and started unlocking everything. Wow. So, um, yeah, we're, we're seeing it more and more that having some sort of separation between the systems, it's not perfect, nothing is perfect in security, right? It's just about 
how many layers can we put in place between um, the outside world and the ability to get the data that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I always describe it as hurdles. And if you can put enough hurdles in place, you're hoping that they'll either trip on one or you'll catch them before they reach the last one, right? <laughs> and so, um, so we're just adding a few more hurdles to that step of getting to the data. Okay. So your company name is? Locker. Locker. And what's your website you're on? Uh, Locker.io. Locker.io. Yep. And, um, L O C K R. We went the whole Web 3.0 and dropped the go. E out Locker of Locker. Locker. Yeah. Right. L O C K R. L O C K R. .io. Yep. Um, and Chris, you are the C C CEO. CEO. Yep. Um, so you guys work with uh, hosting companies, mm -hmm. and um, and key management is your thing. Yep. Um, I think you mentioned some of the names that you work with, but uh, I don't know yeah. if you want to mention that on camera or not. But um, uh, but but what you do is, is a lot more sophisticated than just you know we'll we'll hide your keys for a year or something right, like that, right. right? You actually provide a kind of audit trail mm -hmm. um, to see who's been accessing keys and mm -hmm. so on. And um, I, I think at this point, I just I'll just warn anyone who's watching or listening. We're going deep. <laughs> we're about, deep. To, get, we're we're about deep. to get we're nerdy. Yeah, take a drink. Yeah. First, so <laughs> we're about to go deep here. Mm. Oh wow, that's really good. Um, all right, so let's go deep. Yeah. So we're going to chat about uh, the, 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 the structure of, the, of how this works. Yep. And, that, and some of the things that that enables. And uh, we're not going to use a whiteboard. And in fact, right. we did use a whiteboard right. explaining it to me earlier. <laughs> and I don't usually need one. So, so brace yourself. Gird right. your loins. So um, I guess when we were chatting earlier, you were describing to me that there's three components, right? right. There is the database, mm -hmm. the file system, yep. and then the, the key store, which you refer to as the... The uh, HSM or HSM. the hardware security module, and in this case, that's our service locker. Okay, and um, do you want to do you want to try to describe how the technology works? Yeah. So the first thing to describe is uh, key wrapping. That's that's the fundamental um, piece to everything we do. And what it does is, it takes that sensitive value, whether it's an encryption key or a token or anything like that, and uh, it encrypts it itself. So it, it's. It's encrypting the key that's encrypting the data, right? So you're kind of getting this uh, key inception going on. But um, so now what you have when you when you do that encryption is you have a you know, chunk of encrypted data which used to represent the encryption key, and you have a key wrapping key. Mm -hmm. That wrapping key can't unlock the data itself, right? It can't access the system. It's not a token or anything like that. Its only purpose is to decrypt that key. So you've essentially taken your encryption key and broken it into two pieces. Um, now that wrapping key becomes important, um, but it doesn't have to be protected in the same way that you would have to protect an encryption key. Okay. Let me, so let me just yeah. stop you there, right? So you've, you've encrypted the data you're trying to protect. Correct. Right? You have a key that you would use to decrypt that data. Correct. Right? The data is now encrypted. Yep. Here's the key. You encrypt that key. Correct. With an, and now you have another key that would, you, you would use to decrypt that key. Correct. All right? And so that uh, previously decrypted key is just a piece of junk. Oh, well, not a piece of junk. Well, no, it is. Stuff. It is. But, but it's, it, it's encrypted data. Right. Okay? It's, it's useless to anybody yeah. who, and, who and, gets and access this, to this it. And this key that you would use to decrypt the key you would use to access the data is called your wrapping key, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Continue. So, um, so what we do is, it, at that point, you can do you know one of one of two things. You can either send out the, you can store the encrypted key um, value, you know, the, that encrypted chunk of data somewhere, and that's what we do with Locker. Or you could adversely just um, store the wrapping key. We choose to store the uh, encrypted data. Um, and so we leave the wrapping key in the database where one would normally store that value. So um, it just sits in a, a table in the database and in WordPress it can sit, uh, we actually have create a custom table for it, but it can sit pretty much anywhere. Um, and then we take that in, uh, encrypted data and we send it to Locker to store in an HSM. So you know we're sending it off to the vault to, to lock it down. Um, and so what that does is that that does two things that are very important. The first one is, because it's an encrypted blob of data, Locker can't read it. I can't go into our database of customer keys and see what their keys are. Mm -hmm. So we can't, we, we don't know what we're, we're storing, we just store encrypted data on behalf of our, our customers. Um, so we can't be an attack vector in that sense of somebody okay. coming into our database and looking through our keys and getting that value out. And not only that, but you've removed the physical, the key that you would need to decrypt the data that right. you're protecting off the server. It's encrypted, but you've, you've moved it off the server right. into the HSM, right. into Locker. Right, and, um, and because of that, that key value is never in clear text anywhere, or binary. It's never, it's never in its original shape anywhere, except for in memory during the runtime of that you know, process. So you've restricted the ability to get that encryption key down to either hijacking both pieces and putting them back together, or even more sophisticated, 
trying to get into the runtime and into the memory of the process to get that key out, yeah. which and, and just is a much more sophisticated about, attack. Yeah, and just to illustrate, when they get the key back out of the HSM, out of Locker, right. and they use that to decrypt, and, and they decrypt it with right. the wrapper key, and they use it to decrypt the data, yep. that all happens in memory, and, and then, then it, that memory is it erased just disappears. and it's done. Yeah. Yeah. So it's never stored anywhere where the data is. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. So it's, and, and so because of that, like I said, the, the attack to get a, as you know, like memory-based attacks are much more sophisticated than you know, a file permission off or accessing a, a database backup. Those are very targeted attacks and they take a much higher skill level than, just, than just somebody um, leaving a permission wrong somewhere. So, um, so for that matter, if we were to do nothing but that, um, we've already increased the security posture of our clients, right? Um, so the second thing that we do is, and the, the next question we always get is, well, how do you protect the access to that, that encrypted data in your service, right? So what good is an API key to protect your API keys? Because now that API key, you know, you have the whole inception going on. So you have all of these encrypted keys in your database. Correct. You can't decrypt those keys yourself, nope. but, but they're there right. and they're being stored and yep. you need to protect those. And, and those keys, once decrypted, can be used to access your customer data, which sits on a different server. Right. All right, so how do you protect that? So, um, so that's where the, the file server comes into play. Um, so if the customer is on a, a uh, partnering um, hosting provider, they actually run um, certificates, X, they're called X509 certs, or as most people know them as SSL certs or TLS certs. Um, it's a, a private key pair uh, or public-private key pair. That certificate um, can exist in hosting environments and some of our uh, partners it already does. And so if that exists, that is how the hosting provider knows that environment exists. It knows, you know, this is, you know, Locker.io, and it's in a production environment. It's that container is signed with that certificate. Well, we can use that certificate to sign the, the request out because it's an SSL cert, right? So we can use that to sign the request, and it goes out to Locker with that signature on it. And at the very edge of Locker, the first thing we do is we check the SSL cert. If it's not there, it gets rejected. If it's a cert we don't know or don't trust, it gets rejected. So we have you know, a very, very limited, um, you know, pass through, if you will, or, or exposure to the open web in that you have to be signing all the requests with a certificate that, that comes from an authority that we trust. Mm -hmm. um, so now you have the identity of the entity that is trying to access the keys in the key store. Inherently in the transportation of mm -hmm. the request itself. Mm -hmm. And so you can use that for uh, authentication and also uh, for logging, who, right. who accessed what when, right? Yep, yep, so we have a full log of you, this site and this environment at this time, and, you know, even from this IP address, accessed here. So we can we can start to look at um, trends in that, and eventually we're going to be building in more uh, programmatic ways to um, either bring alerts to folks that hey, there's been some usage of this certificate that looks that looks off. Here's some of the logs around that. Mm -hmm. um, and if if the hosting provider doesn't provide the certificate, we actually run a certificate authority of our own. And if they're using one of our certificates we can actually remotely turn off or, um, or you know, invalidate a certificate. Mm -hmm. So if we detect that something's going wrong, we'll be able to say, okay, turn that cert off, it can't access anymore, I want to go over here and issue another one back to them uh, so the systems can keep running. Awesome. And so, um, so we can kind of get you know, preventive or, again, it's all about the hurdles, right? So if we can detect that somebody's in the system before they're even trying to get to the values that they're that are encrypted, then we can shut off that access fast enough in order for them not to actually get that, that key back. Now, now there's another benefit to the system that, that you're describing to me, and that is that if you have a dev environment and a production environment, uh, it, it, it helps you uh, to protect your data in, in right. that scenario. Do you, do you want to because that? that certificate, um, part of the identity of the certificate, and because the identity is um, cryptographically signed, you can't alter the identity of a certificate. Um, so that certificate not only identifies the, the website or the application, it also in, identifies what environment it's in. Is the, it in a dev environment? that it's on. Yeah, is it in a dev environment or is it in a production? Mm -hmm. We kind of split it into those two buckets. Technically, we can split it into however many we want. But um, So if we have dev and production, uh, two things that that does is the first one is if you're getting that certificate, say I get a dev certificate, I'd steal a developer's laptop um, and I now have that dev certificate. Because it's cryptographically signed, again, going back to the whole, you know, more energy than the sun's produced and all that fun <laughs> stuff, uh, I can't change that into a production certificate. I can't alter that, that signature on there. Um, 
So there's, there's uh, privilege escalation attacks that can't occur with these certificates. Um, and then secondly, um, because of that, when that request comes across, the application doesn't need to know what environment it's in. It just says, I want a MailChimp key or I want my encryption key. Um, sign it with the certificate that I have sitting next to me and off it goes. And Locker looks at that and says, they're asking for their encryption key and it's signed with the dev environment. So it goes back into the HSM and gets out the dev value of the key and gives it back or the production value. So now we're scoping down the availability of it. So first we've taken the key and moved it into the memory only, you know, sp split it up and wrapped it. Secondly, we're storing it in an HSM remotely. And now we're locking down the environments of who can actually talk to that, to that key and, and get it back out. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna right. try to des describe the, the flow right. uh, when this works in production. Yep. And I'm gonna have a sip of my beer first, because yeah. you know, that's how we do. <laughs> mm. All right, so uh, the production system needs to access the data that's in the database. Yep. It has certificates uh, that are on the system. Mm -hmm. It accesses uh, Locker uh, or the um, uh, hardware security module that mm -hmm. contains the encrypted keys. Yep. It uses its certificate to authenticate itself yep. and identify itself. Yep. You log the fact that that's been accessed. You give it an encrypted key, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it takes that encrypted key onto the system. It uses the wrapper key to decrypt that encrypted key. Yep. And then it uses that now decrypted key to decrypt the data and the data is accessed, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. And, and because, again, hurdles, if any one of those pieces fails, the whole thing falls apart. Mm -hmm. um, there, I've, I've seen the stories of these old wedding rings that are um, all pieced together and it's like a puzzle and you slip it on your finger and you, you actually put um, like grass or something like that and you pull it off. And the whole purpose of it is if you pull the ring off, the whole thing falls apart. And so the wife knows that the husband's been taking their wedding ring off, right? That's, <laughs> the, that's the, the story behind it, right? So, but it's, it's like that. It's, you take one piece of this thing and you pull it out and the whole house of cards will fall down. Um, and so a, a hacker would have to get in and be able to replicate those entire steps, right? And it's, a, again, scoping it down to a very limited subset of capabilities yeah. to do yeah. that. And let's face it, based on most of the breaches that we've seen, what would happen is an attacker would compromise the, the file system, see a database there, the database is encrypted. Right, or it doesn't even have to be the database is encrypted. Um, you can encrypt data at rest inside a decrypted database, which is what WordPress does, right? So WordPress um, will store all of its data and then inside of that database, you'll have just encrypted blobs. Mm. Um, and most of the time what a hacker will do is they'll get into the system and they'll snapshot it, right? They want right. to get whatever right, they can right, because right. they don't know yeah. how long that access yeah. is going to be and, there. And that could include API keys for you know, GitHub, uh, AWS, right. just a whole range of systems. The, that are the one that I'd like to say to, you know, for, for larger enterprises, they know the importance of a system like this because they have keys that they're trying to protect. But to small business owners, um, the way I like to put it is, if I were to get into your system and get your MailChimp key, I could validly send an email on your behalf to all of your customers with the content that I choose. So now we're not talking you know, a data breach, we're talking brand authenticity right, here, right. is that you're so gonna be imagine, doing a lot of- how they could have their, their way yeah, with your customers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a whole secondary issue yeah. of, of not just data being breached from encrypted data being breached, yeah. but now you have like business liability. And, and um, so these, these keys, and that's part of, you know, I, I feel like at times it's like that screaming the emperor has no clothes. Um, I'm out there telling folks, look, your database is just littered with all of these API keys and tokens that are accessing very, you know, while your database doesn't have it, it accesses these very sensitive um, information in other systems because we're starting to build websites that aren't just monoliths, right? They're connected right. into all these other systems. And you guys can protect all of this. You can protect not just the database as a give as us a, any as a string, data, and it, but yeah, any uh, string API value, keys, API anything. keys, anything you want. Yep, yep. And, and, it, and it provides a kind of audit trail of who accessed it when and yep, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and if we want to go one level deeper, this is kind of the fun stuff that that gets me excited right yeah. now. Um, is our new system actually allows us to create uh, pops or point of presences of Locker all around the world and spread them amongst various um, hosting environments so we can be on AWS or Google or Azure, on-prem if somebody has a, 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 you know, their own custom data center. Mm. Um, we can put a presence there and then we can start distributing. We've basically created a CDN of HSMs. It's a lot of acronyms here, but um, we've connected all of these systems together because now, most applications aren't being built for a singular environment. They're built to run in the cloud, whatever that is, right? 
And so that could be, I want to have a single code base that I can ship to AWS or to Google Cloud. Um, well, it, you, if you're trying to do encryption key management using the proprietary systems of those clouds, you can't do that. You have to have special cases and all that. Mm -hmm. Whereas we can kind of sit on the edge of all these systems um, and distribute the keys, store them securely in all the HSMs, um, and provide in incredible performance in that, in that process as well. So um, that whole system has sped up our, our internal retrieval times by 10x. That's so awesome. yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's oh, great. That's great. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'm really happy that we had this conversation yeah. on camera. You know, uh, this is some of the sort of leading edge thinking that's happening around security. Yeah. Um, and it's at an infrastructure level. So yeah. it's the kind of thing that hosts would find useful mm -hmm. um, to integrate into their systems. Yep. Uh, it's the kind of thing that folks that have HIPAA uh, compliance requirements yep. or um, you know, some of the higher PCI uh, compliance requirements. FERPA educational useful. institutions yeah. have um, not only HIPAA and PCI and FERPA, they've got a whole list of, yeah. of regulations yeah. that they're under. So you know, if you, if, you, if you work at a host or you, or you run a host, uh, you know, definitely reach out to Chris. Yeah. Um, you know, incorporate their technology into your system. Yeah. And uh, you can kind of enable that for, for their, the host's customers. Right. So the host can enable it for their customers right. and uh, potentially add a lot more value there, right? Right, and they, they love it because it, it reduces their liability, mm -hmm. right? Because if their systems are getting breached and these data breaches are occurring, we're starting to see that liability-wise, that's starting to get passed into the environments that are breached, not just the applications that are being breached. And so, sure. um, so they, it's a service that they want to run, but then at the same time, you know, they don't they don't want to hold the keys. It's it's a it's a daunting task, and it's one that we don't take lightly. But having that separation between the environment and the key management is is critical. Yeah. Well, Chris, this has been an amazing conversation. Yeah, so thanks for having me. You're at WordCamps a lot in yeah. uh, the U.S. certainly, and yep. obviously you're at WordCamp yep. Europe, which we are, yep. which is where we are now in uh, yeah. Berlin. Um, how do folks find you? Are you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter, uh, Tech Nerd Teitzel. Um, <laughs> it's a long one. Just look up Chris Teitzel, and you'll probably find it in the, the yeah. show notes. Um, so yeah, you can find me on Twitter. I'm I'm on there all the time. And your um, website again? Uh, Locker.io. Um, they can find out more about the product. Uh, and then yeah, we're in both WordPress and Drupal, and so we're we're at camps and conferences all over, talking with folks and and trying to present not just our concept and our product, but just basic security and and how to um, build more secure systems. Awesome. Well, it's been yeah. a great conversation. Thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right.